that was a perfect entree to this talk about faith. So if, what's faith got to do with it? What's faith got to do with the building of unity? What's faith got to do with your, your power of the month, will? I was um, at Unity Village in June for the licensing and ordination. So I spent a week on those beautiful grounds. And I was with a woman who was being ordained and she had never been to the village before, which blew my mind. It was like, how could you get to the point of ordination and not have been at Unity Village at all? And so I was telling her about my experiences of being there. You know, for seven years, I used to go out there every every summer to do classes. So first of all, the SE classes to get that finished, um, even though I'd started it years before uh, when I was in Brisbane. And then the leadership classes to become a licensed unity teacher. And one of the things I was, so we were walking from the silent unity building where the light that shines for you, the um, out over the village, over towards the Fillmore Cafe, and to get there, you cross over the central fountain and you cross over the Bridge of Faith. So we were walking towards there and I said to her, you know, when when I was here at 11 o'clock every morning when we were in class, and Phyllis will remember this, I'm sure, the clock would, the big clock, um, the bells would chime and then there would be the uh, chimes of the clock. So at 11 o'clock, 11 boing, boing, boing would ring out over the campus. And then the loudspeakers would crackle alive and you would either hear Charles Fillmore doing the, the Lord's Prayer or Myrtle doing the Prayer of Faith. And how many of you know the Prayer of Faith? Ooh, not many of us. So um, Anand didn't know it either. So I started quoting it for her as we were walking across. And I'll do it for you because I, lo I love it. It's just a sweet prayer. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All that I am can do and be through Christ the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear now that God is love and truth is here. Now, I don't know whether you picked up in that when I was saying that, though they're all little rhyming couplets and Myrtle loved them. And so it was It was written by a woman we don't know much about, um, Hannah Moore Kohals. And we don't know whether she was really a unity person or not, but it came into Myrtle's hands and she she loved it. And it first got published in the children's magazine, We Wisdom, it just as rhyming couplets. So one month, or I think it was published monthly, there were the first two lines and then the next month, the next two lines. So what Myrtle was encouraging children to do was to memorize this prayer. And what she found was that she got so many responses from the adults who were working with the children on the, this that they loved it, uh, that it became a real favourite, obviously, and became something that Myrtle then was recorded speaking it, and it, it was for years came across those loudspeakers at Unity Village. And I memorized it, obviously, because I've just quoted it to you. And 
I added a verse as well for, for when I was doing my prosperity and um, learning my consciousness raising for prosperity. I added a fourth verse. God is my source. I can't be poor with God in charge. There's always more love, health and money too. It's amazing what God as me can do. And I had that printed up on some cards and it became my my little um, go-to prayer for the times when I was still struggling with, with how do you get over, overcome these um, limitations that were in my life. At the moment that I finished quoting this prayer to Anand, we reached the prayer, we reached the bridge of faith and would you know it, the the chimes came out and it was 11 o'clock, exactly 11 o'clock. And it was like, oh my goodness, what a beautiful um, serendipity. And we waited, but unfortunately the loudspeakers no longer crackle and I didn't hear Myrtle's voice. They, they have stopped doing that. But it was, for me, it was just that moment of thinking about that prayer, that faith was so important to Myrtle and to Charles, in fact. They often used it. Myrtle often used it when people came to her for healing. She would say the prayer of faith. And she would help them memorize it and take it take it away for them to, to continue to have that consciousness. So thinking about faith, you know, we know I love that um, quote from Hebrews, the 11 one. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Those are such powerful words, aren't they? Assurance and conviction. Isn't this is not this is not sort of mamby pamby stuff. This is real solid, solid words, solid powerful words. So this faith that I believe was what unity was built on, and in fact, in um, the story of unity, the the book that James Dillip Freeman wrote about unity, he has a whole chapter on, on faith, talking about this is how unity was built. And I was thinking about it, you know, faith, we sometimes think about, um, or in fact, in the work that Charles Fillmore did, when he talked about faith, he talked about Peter being the disciple, right, that represents faith based on the uh, the saying from when Jesus was asking Simon, you know, who, who do people say that I am? And the answer that Simon gave caused Peter uh, Jesus to say, I'm going to call you Peter, which means rock. Now, what is that rock? We sometimes, we talk about it as the rock of faith. I reckon it's the rock of understanding. Faith is built on understanding. Because if you don't have understanding, then your faith, you can put your faith in anything. But if you have an understanding, if you have a firm foundation that everything already exists, nothing is created or destroyed, so when you get that as a really solid foundation, if that becomes your rock, then as soon as you have an idea, as soon as you can see a picture in your mind, then it's possible for that to come into manifestation. So how do we get that out of just in the mind into visibility? It's through faith is through activating faith. The group I'm working with here, what we're using to do that, to activate that faith, that power of faith, is the word yes. Say yes. Think how much power you can put into that word. Yes. It's not a, oh, you know, I hope it'll happen. No, it's a yes. This will 
this is going to be something that's going to be created. So this is this is the way to be act, active or to bring into activity those things that we see in our mind's eye. John and I saw a film the other day called 14 Peaks. Has anyone else seen that? 14 Peaks, it's about, it's on Netflix for those of you who have Netflix. Um, it's about a Sherpa who had this idea of climbing the 14 highest peaks in the world, and they are in Pakistan, Nepal, and China, in the space of seven months. Well, I don't know whether he actually put a time on, limit on it, but he did it in seven months. There had been one person before that in the world who had climbed those 14 peaks, but it had taken him 16 years. So this guy decided that he was going to do it. Now, everyone's saying it's impossible. You can't do this. So he had T-shirts made up with Project Possible written on them. So everywhere they, they got filmed, they were wearing their Project Possible T-shirts. And I love that. And I'm thinking, so what's your Project Possible? What is it that you've got in your mind's eye that people might be saying, no, that's impossible. Think about that song we've just listened to. Imagine. Imagine a world where there are no countries. Imagine a world of peace. And mostly we would be going, I think that's impossible. God, look what's happening at the moment. But maybe this is our project possible. Maybe we're the ones who will be championing this. Build on a firm foundation. Can we see it? Can you actually see it in your mind's eye? We would have no borders. It would be just, we could go, you could move wherever. There would be no fighting for land because we, it's, all, it's all one. The Fillmore's, you know, they had this idea way back when they were first meeting in their living room. And they were having prayer groups and, and healing sessions. And it was just a small group of them. And they started talking about this vision that they had of building a worldwide center where people could come and learn these truths. And, you know, there was just five of them in this room. And one of them flicked Charles a penny and said, here, this is for your building fund. <laughs> and everyone laughed. And Charles didn't laugh. He took that penny and he blessed it. And he stuck that penny on a card with these words, the inexhaustible resource of spirit is equal to every demand. There's no reality in lack. Abundance is here and now manifest. Now he tucked that card away amongst his things and it didn't see the light of day until Edwin Gaines was researching in the archives and she found that card with the penny stuck on it in his writing with those words. But think about that, that from that penny, started a building fund to build what is a millions and millions of dollar campus that we know today. And in five years, that fund had built to $22, I think it was. How many of us would have given up at that point? And so I was, that's obviously not going to happen. Charles Fillmore says so many of us give up too soon. We give up. You know, Myrtle worked for two years for her healing. Actually, and Charles Fillmore does admit this, 
at about the five year point when when that fund was only twenty two dollars or something, he was ready to give up and go back to real estate. Going, well, this isn't obviously this is not working. And it was Myrtle who prevailed on him. Keep the faith. This will work. Now think of that, five years of very little happening. And within 30 years, I mean, this these figures blow my mind. Within 30 years, they had not just 500 members, they had 500 employees. 500 employees. So they were reaching thousands and thousands of people. Imagine if, imagine if Charles had given up, if he hadn't taken any notice of Myrtle. Where would we be? Oh my goodness. Don't even want to go there. So this foundation of faith that they had on such a strong but you have to build, you have to build this faith. It doesn't just happen, does it? It's not a vague thing, vague pro process. Eric Butterworth talks about that in his book, The Creative Life. It's not a vague process. It's a way of turning on something, turning on that mighty power that we have within us. Charles Fillmore likens it to the dynamos for electricity. And then he, remember, he wrote that book, The Atom Smashing Power of the Mind. He, know, he knew that we had this incredible power within us. I've heard it said that, you know, within your hands, you've got enough power coming through your hands to light up a whole city. We have this amazing power. We have to turn it on with this power of faith. It's like turning a switch, getting that pineal gland working. And we do it through our words, our thoughts, our beliefs. But it's not just, you know, the belief will activate, help activate the faith. So it's beyond belief. So, the, you know, when you when we talk about well, something just came to me out of the blue. And we sometimes think of that as being, you know, oh, who knows where it came from? No, it came from, you think of the colors, our imagination, the color associated with imagination is a light blue. So when it's, if we can see it in the mind's eye, then there's a possibility that it can come into manifestation. Then faith is this dark blue, so it's more potent, it's more power. And you say yes to it, and you start to bring the invisible to the visible. Start to bring it into life. And, of course, we've got all the other powers, and you're working with the power of will this, this month, that executive power, which says you get a, when you say yes to what you can see in your mind's eye, you're going to get an idea will come. What we might know as an intuitive nudge or, you know, something, something will, will come up. So the executive, the power of that executive faculty is the will. Do something with it. Don't let it, just let it die. We, you know, we have that whole thing about ideas are like slippery fish. We've got to grab them when they come. Otherwise, it floats through the mind. You go, oh, I'm sure I had a good idea about that, but I can't remember what it is now. So we have to grab those ideas, not let them slip by, not let them vanish. There was a lovely, um, let me see if I can find what I was going to share with you here. That's not the one I want. Charles Fillmore puts it this way. 
is a that is a man sanely believes, <laughs> sanely believes he can do a thing, he will eventually find a way to do it, is an accepted axiom of psychology that a man sanely believes he can do a thing. The mind generates an energy that contacts, contacts the universal energy and causes circumstances and events to fall into line for the attainment of the latent ideal. So think about that. What's your project possible? Lots of people were telling the Sherpa, Nims, that his idea was insane. People were telling the Fillmores that their idea of building a worldwide center when they didn't have resources was maybe they weren't saying insane, but impossible. Couldn't be done. Maybe people have told you some of the things that you have thought you wanted to achieve couldn't be done. You activate faith and you can expect the unexpected. Faith is that assurance, that conviction. So I'm going to invite you to take a few moments in meditation. And I'm going to use the prayer of faith as our foundation for that. I'm going to take, you, take a moment to take a deep breath and let it go and settle yourself into a space where you can just receive these words and allow them to take root in your consciousness. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God as me guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All that I am, can do, and be, through Christ the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear. Now that God as love and truth, I am aware. God is my source, I can't be poor. With God in charge, there's always more. Love, health, and money too. It's amazing what God as me can do. And so it is, and so it shall be. Amen.